Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. This is SCP-1730, What Happened to Site-13, SCP Animation by SCP Explained, Story and Animation. So, sending out a lot of love. Let's hop into this and remember, you know, my videos, I guess, have not been getting pushed to you guys, so you know what to do. Comment on them, like them. Let's push me in the algorithm. Let's go. SCP. Shout out to SCP Explained. 1730 is one of the biggest threats the Foundation has ever faced. SCP-1730 does not exist. It was June 5th when the compound was Hang first discovered. why he got this hip-hop beat behind this shit? Discovered. A large complex of structures in rural Texas, about 15 kilometers northwest of the Mexican border, located in Big Bend Ranch State Park. It was easily the biggest structure in the area, but there was no record of any such structure ever being built. A massive network of power stations, containment facilities, and research buildings, SCP-1730 looked like it had been abandoned for a long time. The exterior was degraded, but the building was still operating. A power generator had been running for an indeterminate amount of time. Even as the infrastructure degraded, power flickered through the site and fuel leaked frequently, but there was one detail that attracted the attention of SCP brass. SCP-1730 bore identifying markings linking- Okay, okay, I don't know about him having this hip hop beat bro i, I kind of want to i don't want to go to the comments because i don't want them to spoil anything about this but there's something about this hip-hop beat that he's got under i don't know if it's too loud too fast or just i don't know if this fits this video it does not feel like it fits not a fan of that it feels to foundation weird. site 13 a research facility that was marked for construction near nome alaska but site 13 had never been built having been abandoned in the planning stages. So why is it in the middle of Texas, fully constructed and long abandoned? The Foundation needed to know more, and they needed their best to investigate. It was time to call in the Game Wardens. Apollo 3, the mobile task force used to investigate dangerous sites, was brought in, and five elite agents were briefed and sent in. Ross, Houston, Noah, Ohalo, and Vigo. It didn't take long for them to discover that something was very wrong with the site of SCP-1730. The facility was located in the middle of South Texas, but the local flora surrounding it was native to Nome, Alaska. Something had transported a building that shouldn't exist to another place and time. Commander Ross ordered his men to enter, with Houston taking the lead. They discovered that the entry led down a long staircase. They descended the freaking counter-strike. It slowly, following a strange light that no one could identify, but had a sudden shock when they discovered that the basement of the staircase was missing. The light suddenly stopped, and it became so dark that it was impossible to see what lay beyond the staircase. Upon probing the inky black void at the base of the staircase, they determined it wasn't a fog or shadow. It was a liquid, and it was rising. Ross ordered the men to pull back, but Houston was in too deep. He couldn't break free from the inky black liquid. The men pulled him away and got him free, but his legs were gone. Not ripped off because there was no blood anywhere, smoothly cut off, as if they were never there. And as they put Houston down, he stood up on phantom legs. He didn't feel any pain, but everyone could tell something was very wrong with this place. And the messages they started seeing on the wall made clear they weren't the only ones who knew it. What happened to Site-13? Death here. Not my body. Bleed. There had been other people or things inside SCP-1730, and they wanted anyone who entered to know that this was a very dangerous place to be. As they advanced down the hall back toward the entrance, they saw what looked like a person in the distance. But as they approached, it became clear it wasn't another explorer. It was an old, horribly disfigured corpse seemingly attached to the wall, not by chains, but fused to the wall in unnatural ways. At first, the team seemed unconcerned, recognizing the corpse as someone named Zachary. For Fortunately, command back at the base realized this as the effects of some sort of cognito hazard, a mental infection in the base. They uploaded a filter to their helmets and the team recoiled in horror at the sight in front of them. But the horrors were just beginning. They turned around to see a shimmering humanoid entity in the hallway behind them. As it approached, its footsteps distorted the hallway around. It pulled AP. What is going on in Site 13? E3 <laughs> Noah toward it without touching him. And as the soldier was pulled into its clutches, his body started to distort. Vigo was next, being grabbed by the arm by a long appendage, and his arm started to change color and distort. 
but the Foundation sent Apollo 3 in prepared. Houston produced a portable reality anchor designed to handle reality warping entities, and with a flash of red light the creature was revealed. It was a horribly elongated humanoid that only existed for a second before the reality anchor erased it and restored the hallway to its normal state. Vigo would recover, with the strange red color in his arm fading eventually. Noah wasn't so lucky. He was already dead, and oh. been fused into the wall just like the unfortunate corpse. These horrors had been encountered just by trying to return to the entrance, so it was clear the only smart thing to do was to descend further into the facilities and get some answers. As they advanced, not encountering any other... Who comes up... Wait, wait, wait. Who came up with the idea for this group to descend further into Site-13? This, this is nutty. This is nutty. This is actually wild. This is a good one. This is a good SCP, but... They're supernatural entities, they saw more evidence of the dark things that had occurred in Site-13. The infirmary had been torn apart, a cafeteria had been melted into slag, and a large group of containment cells ended with a section called Olympia Class. But while most of the other cells were standard sized... Why do I feel like this isn't a real, like this SCP, this place, Site-13, wasn't an actually inhabited place, but it takes the appearance of an abandoned, like, facility. Like, like with SCPs, it could literally be anything, and that's where my thoughts are going right now. It's literally meant to look like the place was flipped or ransacked, but that's how it comes by default. It was never a place that was, like, pristine from the jump. These were over 100 meters high. What had the foundation, or whoever ran this place, been keeping in these cells? They would get more answers as they made their way down the hall, where they saw a single television still working and illuminating the hallway. At first the television flickered, but the image soon cleared, and the agents were able to see what it was broadcasting. It was the interior of a containment cell, and there was someone in it, and they recognized them as one of the most dangerous beings contained by the SCP Foundation, Bobble the Clown, a predatory supernatural clown that inhabits a children's TV show. Bobble the Clown was broadcast by an unknown source and could only be seen by children under 10. Originally seeming to be a normal kid show about a clown, every episode eventually devolved oh. into the murderous Bobble teaching kids how to Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They do horrible things like arson and torture. The Foundation eventually captured and isolated Bobble's broadcast. Yeah, wow. That's fucking crazy. I remember watching this one. I don't know if I watched it on my channel, but yeah, Bobble the Clown's a a menace. <laughs> but the clown remained hostile and vicious, but not here. As the team talked to the bobble trapped in the mysterious Site-13, it became clear that this clown was broken by whatever it had experienced. It rambled, it hid from the camera, and it was clearly terrified as it told the team about the horrors of the site, and it seemed to recognize the agents as something familiar, but not completely familiar. It claimed to be able to smell them, and it said they smelled different. As Bobble rambled on, the agents learned about a man named Emerson, who ran the site. Like the Foundation, he was obsessed with containing the strange and dangerous entities in the world. But unlike the Foundation, he didn't just want to protect the world from them. He hated them. The entities in Site-13 didn't even have numbers. Emerson wanted to use them up however he wanted and to dispose of them. It's something Bobble called the Meat Grinder. Entities that outlived their usefulness were taken down below and none were ever heard from again. It was directly counter to every SCP Foundation policy, but this site had clearly been performing these horrible experiments for years. How? And why hadn't anyone heard of it? The team continued to make their way into the facility, but their signals were lost as they entered the cryogenics unit. <laughs> By the time contacted- My man still got invisible legs. I would not- I would not want to complete my mission. There is no way you're getting me to go deeper into this site. It is not possible. been restored, they were no longer alone. There were survivors, both agents of the Foundation and survivors of the facility, and they were angry. With no way out and massively outnumbered, they called for backup. Mobile Task Force T5, also known as Samsara, was reserved oh, Samsara. for the heavy-duty missions. They're an elite group of practically immortal cyborgs fashioned from the flesh of a god and equipped with further cybernetic enhancements to eliminate Keter level threats and to protect themselves from- I did not remember that. Holy moly. The flesh of a god. <laughs> 
incognito hazards. They were sent in through a drainage gate to look for survivors and neutralize whatever lay within. They didn't know what to expect, but they knew one thing. No one who had been sent in had come out. It wasn't long before they realized how dangerous this mission would be. As they came across some large gated drainage pipes, they could see at least 20 charred bodies of humanoids pushed up against the gate, some reaching their hands through. Whatever had happened in Site 13, these unfortunate beings had been desperate to escape. As they made their way down the drainage pipe, they could feel it getting hotter, as if they were nearing an energy source. And there was one other odd thing about the pipe. It was draining inward, not out. They made their way into a control room where many of the consoles had been destroyed. Looking through a window, their view was obscured by a mysterious black mass. On the control panels, they could read terms like incinerator and body pit access. They split up trying to find answers, but found many of their accesses blocked by the black mass. As the T5 task force argued over their <laughs> next move, they were... He opened the door and said, nah, never mind, and closed the door back. Oh my god, but he's made with the flesh of a god, that's funny. Startled by a sudden jolt, the giant mass had started moving. The team watched as the mass spun, revealing a giant turbine, which turned the inky substance into a fine slurry that was then scorched by giant streaks of fire. One of the T5 shot open the glass chamber, allowing the team to get closer and blasting them with a wave of heat. As they descended into the chamber, they could see a massive plant-like structure overhead, which started to shake. Suddenly, thousands of glowing pods were released from the massive plant, and each one lit up and let the team view the chamber more clearly. But it was what was inside the pods that was more disturbing. Each pod had a humanoid shape inside, seemingly reaching toward the team until they hit the slurry below and the shadows went dark. The team descended to investigate the slurry when something started to leak out of the walls. Looking at it, they could see something moving within. One of the team members picked up the wriggling object out of the black liquid and it took a bite of his hand. It was a leech and there were thousands more of them moving toward the slurry consuming it. And as the leeches ate, they started growing. They seemed to be moving in unison, communicating with a larger being lurking at the base of the slurry. A larger leech, a queen, or something else. The team wasn't sticking around to find out. They beat a hurried escape from the leech room, finding themselves in another hallway. Whatever the black substance was, the entities who had been here had used it, scrawling blood on the walls over and over again. Occasionally, they would come across a drained corpse covered in the black fluid. Had the leeches bled them dry? The facility was so sprawling that the team knew if they wanted any chance of navigating it safely, they needed to get the lay of the land. They needed to find the control center. The door read stairs to cryonics, and the leeches were nowhere to be found. It seemed like a safe path. But as soon as the team entered, the temperature dropped drastically to well below where it would be safe for a human to survive. I thought they were cyborgs. I thought they were cyborgs. Were they like cyborgs coated in the flesh of a god? I'm so lost. But anyways, what I was thinking about was for them to go out or trace their steps is to get an SCP that was like anomalous. To the, I'm sure you could write this in since anyone could write an SCP story. Like an scp type of rope that extends forever and can't be destroyed by anything so they could like try to like and it like ex it extends forever can't be destroyed by anything and it's like uh you can retract and <laughs> you can <laughs> stir e-tract and retract you can basically like extend it and descend it that that is not a word what is the word for like extending and what's the retract is it extend and retract that works you could extend and retract it forever so they can like tie it to something then tie it to themselves and then have gone into site 13 that's what i would have done like some anomalous rope that can't be destroyed so they can trace their way out of here or see how the room shifts or see like get a get a message from mission control up there to see what it looks like when they're going through these rooms because it seems like the room shift and like I don't even know. The team's internal How are they cold, though, kicked in to save their lives, but it wasn't the only threat. The team was about to encounter exactly what Site 13 was keeping locked up. As soon as they entered the room, sound ceased to work. The filters in their gear were overloaded, and the team saw warnings around the room. Silence. Don't look. A massive multi-limbed figure emerged, with each of its 60 arms moving independently. The creature had no head, but a large circular structure covered with ancient glowing symbols. Whatever it was, it was ancient, all-powerful, and deadly. 
The team scrambled to get away as the glyphs on the creature burned white hot. Anyone who touched it was burned. Anyone who looked too long at it felt their optical implants burn out. The symbols on the creature were indecipherable, but one word was clear and printed in English. Emerson. Emerson. Site 13 was from another world, another timeline where the SCP Foundation evolved into something horrible, ruled over by Elliot Emerson. It tortured and captured its beings and eventually killed most of them in the horrors of the incinerators. When an escape threatened to destroy the facility, Emerson successfully activated the device that removed the facility from their world into ours. Of course, as any avid follower of the SCP Foundation will know, there's far more to the story than this. Emerson may have been the start of Site-13's problems, but he was far from the end. We're talking about a tale so epic in size and scope that it would be impossible to fit into one video. A tale of subterranean horror, a daring rescue mission into the bowels of Site-13, and an anomalous battle to end all battles. And you can look forward to that epic tale, including the horrifying story of Leech Boy and the tragic saga of Dr. Hadley in Part 2, The Samsara Extraction Mission. Trust The Samsara Extraction Mission. Hold on. Now with the music, it, it sounds epic. Now now I get the music. Well, it, it takes you getting to the end to realize that actually the music kind of fits. And why do they got 811 tooted up like this, bro? Stop it. Stop it. They could have stopped the water right here halfway. Nah, nah, nah. He, he had to draw this part. <laughs> oh, bro, I get it. Anyways, SCP-1730, the epic final battle. Is this the next part? Because I almost want to just hop into this next part. I, I don't know. I Should I do it? Should, should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? Should I do it? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to split it up into two videos, but I'm going to do it. Because I want to I listen to this. Because... I actually got, I started to get consumed at the end. <laughs> so Emerson was, let me see, let me go back. So Emerson is like. Named Emerson, who ran the site. Like the foundation, he was. So Emerson ran the site. You're thinking he's a normal person. But what, he turned into this deity now? Emerson, site. Or was he always the deity? I guess we'll have to find out. I gotta find the, the epic final battle. It doesn't sound like it's the next video. It sounded like there was another one he said. This is the full story. But this is the, the epic final battle. I want to kind of go to this. I'm going to jump to this. All right. Much love and moonlight. This this one is interesting. And I'm definitely captured to keep going. So I'm going to go keep going. All right. See you in the next one. <laughs> Peace.